As a general rule, we tried to stick to the art anytime we could. Um, there were things here and there that sometimes made that impossible if we were going to tell a story that wouldn't take the viewer out of the picture. You can have a 2D art going from side to side, up and down, but if, if somebody turns ahead or turns around, I mean, that's, we can't do that. The, the 2D plane just breaks, the, so the illusion breaks. Simple things like a head turn or someone walking from point A to point B within a frame became nearly impossible um, working with the 2D art. So we would have to create a 3D character that could either turn his head or move across the frame. Because you stopped. So, the hour arrives. 3D is a whole uh, different beast. Uh, everything is uh, built from scratch. We have models that are built. Um, and there's also just, just trying to integrate our, our 3D with a 2D. The, there's a certain grain, there's a certain color um, palette to what uh, Esau did. And it was tricky trying to come up with a different combination of things that made our 3D not stick out too bad from the art. It's, it's not seamless, but it's uh, as close as we were able to find for this project. And sometimes there were backgrounds that, you know, we had to sort of create or recreate or piece together based on other art. Yeah, there's stuff in a, in a comic book they do, like an artist will paint out, uh, paint in a set, and then in the other panels after that doesn't because it's already implied that that's where the, look, that's where the action is taking place. And we felt as we're trying to take this towards a more cinematic, filmic look that we couldn't just hop out of our sets like that. So we've had to work to try to recreate our sets um, and from opposite angles. So sometimes we were able to find other panels in the comic book to just reuse. Sometimes we had to project that art onto a 3D set and rotate it around and repaint in. Uh, but basically what we're trying to do is to keep the audience from looking at it and say, well, what just happened? Your viewer would sort of lose all sense of perspective and where they were in, in three-dimensional space. So that was a, a pretty big job for the compositors was, and, and the other artists to, to find those elements and uh, sort of recreate the, you know, be it Loki's bedroom or um, whatever it was. But it's, it's a constant process. We found out things in issue four of making it look better that we hadn't figured out in two or three. So Mark uh, took uh, on the more the pre-production side and defining what the initial step from the comic book page to an animated form of storytelling. Uh, what that boiled down to is um, I would get the voiceover that uh, would be sent to us um, from James Snyder at Edge Studio in New York who handled all of the uh, voice casting and uh, recording. The filth, what cruelty to bring up a son in such a manner. And then I would take that and then take the, the already scanned in um, our panels and everything. Uh, time every shot out so that I have basically a rough cut and we knew how many shots uh, we were going to have and then how long each shot was going to be. And then we would get together and decide on what worked, what didn't work and how from there to move on. There's a lot of logistics involved. Um, just because of timeline, we may not have time to do this character as 3D versus, you know, uh, something else. So it becomes, a, it becomes a big juggling act. And then I would go back in and handle more of the production side, who was working on what, um, and from there making sure that every step of the process was in line with the vision that Mark and I had at the beginning. So that once it had been through painting, uh, rigging, animating, and then the final compositing, making sure that that was exactly what we had envisioned at the beginning. And then once you get closer to the end, um, part of my job too was sit down and then look at it as a finished piece and then edit it and see where we needed to trim some fat. Um, are the sequences working the way we wanted them to work? After a picture for each episode was locked, we would send it back to Edge Studio for mixing and sound design. Um, and then Amats Plesner at Underground Music did such an amazing job scoring all four of these episodes. 
we're all constantly trying to make things work. I mean, this uh, this way of taking a comic book to a different medium is it, is tough. We're still experimenting and figuring it out. And there were times we would work on a shot and make it all through the process, and we'd look at it and think it's just not quite working. And and so trying to you know figure out how to juggle things like that in the amount of time without having to recreate everything. Um, so that was frustrating. But there were times when we thought that that was going to work and we made it through and then the end result was great. Sometimes the most frustrating moments became the most gratifying. I think we uh, uh, we told a story that's uh, not a lot of big explosions and not a lot of action and it's really a, a very human sort of uh, little indie film uh, feel to the whole thing. Loki as a person, as a character, you know, what are his what are the things he's going through and how do we make that relatable to the audience? Maybe driven to extremes. But despite ancestry, destiny, and the weight of the cosmos, he retains yet his power to say no. Thor will bear you no good will for sparing him. Perhaps not. I think anybody who has a family can relate to the story. I think a lot of this is about uh, Loki's feelings having grown up, uh, feelings being an outsider, feelings that there was always a favorite brother. You know, it really does breathe some life into the character. Uh, he's not just the uh, uh, the evil guy in, in this, but he's a guy who has a reason for his actions. Uh, and as he discovers through the course of the uh, of the comic, a lot of the feelings he had as a child really do have some um, uh, place in reality. There really is something behind a lot of the things he believed, and in some cases not, uh, as he goes through and, and learns more throughout the story.